we got something a little different here. I've got a number of my gaming dice that we're going to sort through and we'll talk about a little bit. It'll be different, it'll be a bit loud, but these dice need a little bit of extra attention because it's been a while since I've used all of them because I have so many. So let's pour these out here out of our, our classic Crown Royal bag. Personally, I've been playing D&D, Dungeons and Dragons, since about 2014, on and off. Never had a very consistent game, but I've always had a consistent addiction to collecting all these. So what we'll do, we'll sort these out a little bit, arrange them, we'll talk about the dice and what they mean a little bit, and see where we end up. But let's, let's go sort these, let's move a little bit. Start uh, with your 20 sided die. This is going to be your most important one. You're going to use it the most often to do any kind of checks or see what your uh, Dungeon Dragons character can, can accomplish. You got a 12 sided, a couple that have 10 sides. The zero indicates a 10. Then an 8 sided. Six sided, and then a four. Notice the little couch drop because if you step on this, it's not a pleasant experience. So these are all used in different ways. Your D twenty, typically, oh, I got nineteen. Typically, you're gonna use to see what you can accomplish. And then these lower ones, especially the 12, 10, 8, 6, and four. Is how to determine damage that your character is able to uh, inflict. Whereas these two tens together, if you roll them together, you take this as 70, this is 6, and it gives you a 100 side to do something for a percentage based when you need to roll something out of 100, but you don't want to roll you know, 20 times with two, a bunch of different dice. I've had these white dice, I believe came in a combo pack a long time ago. This set, which might be hard to see, but this is critical roll dice. Critical roll, let's say, uh, Twitch show that also gets put on YouTube by creators called Geek and Sundry, which is headed by, or at least it used to be, Felicia Day. It was founded by her popular actress. And this show, Critical Role, is a bunch of voice actors as they play through various campaigns. Uh, I believe it started back in 2016, maybe 2015. Uh, it's a phenomenal show if you like D&D or even just fantasy in general, as they do a really good job of making really intriguing characters and scenarios, all with, with phenomenal voice acting as that's their true form career. And so with one of their campaigns, their first one, they made these dice, this dice set, among others, a bunch of other merchandise that had come out. So this set right here, got the 20 showing there. This was actually my first set I ever bought. I went to a local game store for it. Use these quite a lot. Always love the color patterns on them. I believe that's the right one there. I've got a few that have blue here, if that hasn't already been obvious. Particular favorite color of mine. It's getting a little harder to discern which one's which here. Let's see if we can... Where is the other one? We're looking for a D8 or a D12. How's that? Hmm, maybe this set's incomplete, actually. Because I'm sure not seeing that. Let's put these to the side and we'll find a few more. This was the second set I ever got. Then it comes, uh, there's one of them. There's the D6 for that set. This set actually came with three 
six of dice. But also the same, which are d8. Or d20. There's the, no, that's a different one. So this looks like a d4, a cow drop. That can make the most satisfying sound when you roll it. That looks like our, one of our d10s. And there's our percentile. Still look for our 20 sided bow, or our 12 sided bow. Let's see, again, when you get as many as this, it gets a bit tricky to find all of them. There's our complete set on this one. I used a sorcerer character with this dice specifically because some of his abilities use these d6s, so it's nice to be able to roll all three at once rather than one die three times. Put this with the rest of our completed set. If you've ever played Dungeons & Dragons, you'll know, depending on the group you're with, it can be all about the dice. It can be there's one of them, all about the players or somewhere in the middle. For me, I've always liked having a game that the dice determines how successful things are, but it's really more of a focus on the players, more of a focus on the world, because the way it's played is you have one person that creates the whole game, or runs the game. And they give scenarios, explain who's around, explains who the players meet, and the players have to act off of that. They have to choose what decisions their characters would make, and for better or worse, when they want to try and accomplish something. It's typically met with some dice rolls that determine whether Success or failure. When I've played, I most frequently run the game. It's what, of all the titles I have, it's probably my most nerdiest, where I'm called the Dungeon Master for Dungeons and Dragons. And there's other games that use similar dice or use the same dice, and they typically are called a Game Master or a GM or a DM for Dungeon Master. And it's something I very much love doing. I actually do it for a group of people that I met online through Twitch. And I actually just had a session today, a few hours ago. And it's one of my favorite pastimes because as much as I love video games, as much as I love really interactive games like that, there's never anything that quite compares to the flexibility that Dungeons & Dragons allows for other game systems like this. It lets you have a fully immersive world and set of characters where you can truly attempt virtually anything. And then the dice. And the GM that you're playing with determine the outcome. Determine whether you succeed and save the world or fail fantastically and have to continue to correct your mistakes. You don't need to be a math nerd or even a, a fantasy geek to, to play it, although it doesn't hurt. Critical Role, for anyone that, that may be on the fence about Dungeons & Dragons or want to see more, is a great resource to watch people play. Although, you have to keep in mind that there are people that have been playing for quite a while. They're, they're experts, they know exactly what they're doing, at least seem to. They have a good knowledge of the rules and a great ability to fully immerse themselves in their character. And it's not always reasonable to consider that from uh, everyday folk like us. Looks like here I was actually mistaken. This is the fourth d6 that goes into the cell right here. But being able to watch that gave me a lot more confidence in understanding how the game was played how the characters should interact with one another, and just the significant amount of potential that the game has. This set, this yellow set, 
came in a combination, I believe, with both the reds, the bright reds, the silver and red. I thought I could make sure I actually still on camera here. But it came in a combination set from Amazon. And when you get the plan as much as I do, one of the problems that you can run into is purchasing all these dice can become quite an addictive task. You know, there's some that are much, much more detailed than this. They have much more innate patterns on them. They can be incredibly detailed. They can have much sharper textures, colors, so many different ways to make these dice unique. All of these, by my standards, are fairly common, fairly typical dice. Doesn't make them any less interesting to me. But it's definitely only touching the surface of what you can have. Some people like to play with just a single set. Some people like to mix it up. Some people will test their dice out before a game and make sure, find the ones that are rolling the best for them and make sure to only use those, or at least only use them until they begin to also start rolling poorly. This set, I like to use if I'm use, ever using some kind of acid or poison attacks, which is pretty common in the game, as it is a fantasy world with spells and dragons and everything alike. Then finally, oh, we have one more stray, it looks like there's our D8 that we were looking for here. Finally, we gather these up. So these as you can probably tell, are pretty standard dice. Your dice that have a one, two, three, four, five, or six sides. But they're just as common in the game as they are in the real world. These are typically good for both rolling, for using as markers, for indicating certain things. As well as, you know, being able to take them all up, give them a good shape, and roll on the result. Not a bad roll. Actually, we almost got the... almost had the straight there. But, as any experienced player, most experienced players, the more they play, the more interest they have in gathering these up. And unfortunately, if memory serves, over all the courses of play, I've accidentally lost a couple of these. As typically, this comes from a set of 36. But we're a couple short. But that's fine. I think I have enough. And some people will have ornate bags, cases, purses even, to fill these up. Me, I go with the typical Crown Royal bag. Gives a little bit of flavor, so to speak. Nice drawstring to be able to put in their back. And it gives a nice comforting sound when they're all in there. Hopefully, you enjoyed this. D&D is a phenomenal pastime. 
doesn't take many people to have to be able to have a good game. It can be done in person, it can be done online. There's plenty of resources out there, there's plenty of ways to find groups. But ever since I've played it, it's brought me closer to a lot of different people. Made a lot of great memories. number you can get but it's a fantastic game and a fantastic hobby to share with great people